China spent 10 years and spent 90 billion yuan to build a new type of thousand-mile Grand Canal, which will channel 600 cubic meters of Yangtze River water into the Huaiha River and can accommodate 2,000-ton large freighters. The West was completely jealous this time. How did China build the Grand Canal? In this video, let us take a closer look. Diverting water from the Yangtze River into the Huaiha River. In recent years, China has achieved rapid economic and technological development. So many projects have brought benefits to many people. As we all know, there are many rivers in Anhui Province, China. However, as the global temperature rises, many rivers are dry, which greatly hinders the passage of local cargo ships and brings inconvenience to local residents. Nowadays, in order to facilitate smooth north-south shipping, China directly diverts the water from the Yangtze River into the Huaiha River, increasing the connection between the two major water bodies. This project is China's first modernized main shipping Grand Canal from north to south, and China's second north-south shipping traffic artery after the Beijing-Hangzhou Grand Canal. This super Grand Canal that has been built for nearly three years is the Jianghuai Grand Canal. Speaking of this canal, we must first understand the water transfer main project from the Yangtze River to Huaiha River. The project of leading water from the Yangtze River to Huaiha River is another major cross-regional water diversion project launched by China. And it is also a key construction project since the south to north water diversion and the diversion of water from the Han to the Weiha River. The autumn drought that occurred in Anhui last year was the most serious in the past 40 years. A total of 793 rivers and more than 1,400 reservoirs in Anhui province were completely dry. These conditions have increasingly highlighted the importance of the project of diverting the Yangtze River to the Huaiha River. Data shows that the 723-kilometer diversion project connects the two major water systems of the Yangtze River and the Huaiha River, spanning 12 cities in Anhui and two cities in Hunan. The purpose is to open up waterways between the north and the south. The transportation network solves the drought in the water-scarce areas along the land and the shipping problems of the Yangtze River and Huaiha River, benefiting a population of up to 41.32 million. The project of leading water from Yangtze to Huaiha River is too long, so it needs to be divided into three parts for construction. The first step is to introduce the water from the Yangtze River into Chaohu Lake, and then send the water from the Yangtze River to the north through the Jianghuai Grand Canal and finally run through the entire project. But when it comes to diverting the Yangtze River to the Huaiha River, we have to mention the Jianghuai Grand Canal project. The inland super Grand Canal that can pass freighters of up to 2,000 tons. The Jianghuai Grand Canal, which is under intensive construction, is another major waterway in China that runs through the north and the south, and is also a key construction project of the Yangtze River to Huaiha project. Its construction standard is built in accordance with China's National Class II waterway. Even a 2,000-ton cargo ship can pass unimpeded in the waterway. The Jianghuai Grand Canal connects the Yangtze River and the Huaiha River and passes through Chaohu Lake in Anhui in the middle. At that time, the water of the Huaiha River will merge with the water of the Yangtze River, and a second estuary will be added for the Huaiha River. The total investment of the project of diverting the Yangtze River to the Huaiha River is nearly 91.2 billion, of which the cost of supporting waterway projects is 29.3 billion. Together with the surrounding waterways such as the Shane River and the Wuxian Canal, 
a modern important waterway spanning thousands of miles and parallel to the Beijing-Hangzhou Grand Canal will be built. Build a water bridge over the canal. The Jianghuai Grand Canal is expected to build a total of seven ship locks of more than 1,000 tons, and more than 70 bridges will be rebuilt for this purpose. It has built a total of three aqueducts, and the spans of these three steel structures are among the longest in the world. The most eye-catching thing in the construction of the Jianghuai Grand Canal is the aqueduct of the main canal of the Pai River, which is also vividly called the Water Bridge. When the channel diverting the river to the Huaiha River flows through Hafei, it intersects with the main canal of the Pai River in the Pishihang Irrigation District, and the water level difference between the two water systems is as high as 30 meters. In order to ensure that the important water supply channels of Hafei City are not interrupted, the original main channel of the Pai River was cut and straightened to build a navigable aqueduct overpass, and the Yangtze River Jianghuai Channel passes down the main channel of the Pai River. A world-class water bridge came into being. What's so great about this water bridge? The main span of the aqueduct reaches 110 meters, and the total steel consumption is as high as 20,400 tons, making it the world's largest span steel structure navigable aqueduct. How easy is it to build such a huge steel structure aqueduct? The construction party innovatively proposed the structural system of upper flat and lower arch, upper opening and lower closing, outer truss and inner wave, and achieved a breakthrough in the structural span under super-large variable amplitude loads. This aqueduct will fly over the Jianghuai Canal, will serve as a water supply point between the two major cities of Hafei and Luan, and can also be used for 100-ton ships. When all the projects are completed, we will be able to see 100-ton ships passing through the Jianghuai Grand Canal and 2,000-ton cargo ships sailing under the aqueduct. This kind of picture is unique in China. Goods bypassing the Beijing-Hangzhou Grand Canal will become history. When the Jianghuai Grand Canal is completed, it will end the history of the separation of the two major water systems of the Yangtze River and Huaiha River in Anhui, and open up the connection between the Wanjiang Urban Belt, the Hafei Metropolitan Area and the Central Plains Economic Zone. Previously, in order to reach the Yangtze River Basin, goods from the north had to bypass the Beijing-Hangzhou Grand Canal for shipping. This situation will be improved when the Jianghuai Canal is put into operation. The Jianghuai Grand Canal is expected to reduce transportation distances by up to 600 kilometers, greatly strengthening China's existing shipping network. This super grand canal, which has gathered the wishes and painstaking efforts of generations of Chinese people, will become the second main high-level shipping channel from north to south in China, which is of great significance to the construction of China's water transportation network. Impact of Engineering Construction on Ecological Environment the water transfer project from the Yangtze River to Huaiha River is not only a golden waterway, but also an ecological corridor. The project can replenish more than 500 million cubic meters of water to Chaohu Lake every year, which will help promote the flow of water in the lake area and restore the ecology of Chaohu Lake. The flow of river water into the Huaiha River can ensure that the main stream of the Huaiha River will not be cut off and provide an important water source replacement condition for the pressure extraction of groundwater in Huai Bay. The Pei Estuary Sewage Interception and Diversion Project with a design scale of 1.5 million tons per day has reserved space for sewage discharge and pollution control for the development of Hafei into a megacity and established a safety barrier for project protection and the ecology of Chaohu Lake. 
At the same time, in order to practice the concept of ecological priority and green development, in order to protect the migratory and wintering grounds of Kaizi Lake migratory birds, the project has increased the project investment by about 350 million yuan and moved the waterway to the west by about one kilometer. In order to protect the habitat of the Yangtze finless porpoise, engineers gave up the optimal channel and reduced the scale of diversion. In order to minimize the impact of water conservancy projects on the ecology of the watershed, fish passing facilities were added to the project to open life channels for fish. What consequences will the water diversion project bring to downstream cities? Many people are curious about whether such a large-scale water diversion project will have any impact on the downstream cities that originally depended on the water resources of the Yangtze River Basin. It is obvious that the rational use of resources has always been the purpose of China. When planning this route, Chinese experts must have thought carefully and gone through many simulation experiments. Otherwise, such a big move will definitely bring irreparable consequences. We should believe in China's comprehensive infrastructure strength. Whether it is good or bad to build such a grand canal, we can only wait for the verification of time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.